good morning. Why don't you come on up? This is my wife, Marion. Our anniversary is Monday. tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. 29 years tomorrow. Wow. So we've been, uh, since, since last year, we've been all over. Just give them a little a brief wrap-up of kind of what we've been doing okay. and where we're going. Uh-huh. Okay, so after we were with you last year, we, we love our time with you guys. It's, it's one of our highlights to be here. Anyhow, after we were with you, we went back home for a very short period of time, and we went uh, probably about a month, and then we went up to Canada, to uh, Toronto, to the airport, uh, airport vineyard. I know it has another name right now. Um, what do they call it now? Oh, okay, Toronto Airport. <laughs> Anyhow, um, but we also went to Ottawa to uh, National House of Prayer there with Rob and Fran Parker. What a treat. And out of that time, Chantel, a uh, song was birthed in the late night. She snuck into the prayer room, and hopefully she'll sing it at the end. But it was such a sweet time. We went into your parliament building and prayed there. It was, uh, there's your prime minister right there. And we're like, this is awesome. All of your MPs. So we're in the balcony with Rob and Fran, just, Jesus. It was, it was great fun. Outside of the parliament building is this priest that has been praying there for how long? 25 years. At least 25 years. He fasts every time the house is in session. And, um, you know, from, he'll fast until dinner and rain or shine. And he's there. If it's snowing in a blizzard, he's there. He's out there praying every time they're in session. It was like, can we just have our picture with you? <laughs> it's like what we do is nothing in comparison. You know, God is, God is amazing. He has these hidden intercessors all over the nations. And, uh, and they're growing. It's an army that is growing. We went um, real fast. I'm going to derail myself. We went to uh, a a tour on the East Coast visiting several houses of prayer. We ended up driving over 6,000 miles. Afterwards, when I was map questing it, it was like, no wonder we were so tired. It was like, I didn't even know there was 6,000 miles to do. But we went all the way down through Florida and up through Maine and back down to Kansas City. And there's houses of prayer, people praying all over the nation. There's, there's this stirring and this rumbling. Uh, one fellow had a dream at the beginning of the year from Nashville. He said that Lou Engle and his company were going to all these little churches and houses of prayer, and it's this acts for shaking of, of God doing something across the nation and across the nations. Anyhow, we went up from Ottawa. We went down to uh, Detroit. We uh, were there with a the team. We fasted and prayed for 40 days. Uh, we saw incredible reconciliation even between the Arab and the Jews on the platform at the call Detroit. There was a guy that was a top terrorist. He was like number one bad terrorist that came to the States and um, got saved. He was, he was one of the top imams. I think his cousin is the top imam. And um, he got saved. He was down there. He, has a, he wears a, a flak jacket. Is that what you call it? And um, Because he's on the most wanted list for um, Muslim terrorists. Anyhow, he got... Uh, Christian terrorists? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, they want him. They, they don't like him. Anyhow, he got down on his knees and just repented and and ask forgiveness from a Jewish rabbi. It was incredible. And then between the African Americans and, and the whites, uh, we went out there and prayed on this road called Eight Mile Road. It's literally, they call it the Wall of Hostility, or the mini Berlin Wall, where uh, back in the 40s, they literally built a wall to keep blacks out of the white neighborhoods. And so we went out there, um, one team of ours went out there daily praying. We uh, Personally, we were in Dearborn, where we were surrounded by 95% Muslims. So it was, it was an incredible time. We were praying for the Muslims. We saw healings, um, testimonies when we were out on the streets doing prophetic prayer. But this one guy, uh, Rod, and the interns had prayed when we went back to Dearborn one time, later on, a few months later, and they prayed over this guy. So a few months after that, uh, one of the interns said, so, you know, how's that stomach problem, that chronic stomach problem that you had for years? He goes, oh, I'm healed. And they said, do you, do you know who healed you? Oh, yes, Jesus healed me. Only Jesus can do that. And he says, well, uh, 
do you want to meet Jesus? He says, well, he's appeared to me three times in my dreams, but I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so, so we decided, okay, we've been praying, God, give them dreams, visions, encounters. Now we're praying, salvation. <laughs> it's like, what else do you need? Anyhow, so from there, we've, uh, we went down to Dallas. Oh, my goodness, the very first women's call that we've ever done. Come on incredible. It was like a confrontation in the heavenlies is the best way that I can explain this. There was such a high level of warfare on there, but incredible victory. I know that we are going to see fruit in years to come. See, the work of an intercessor is that you don't necessarily see it immediately. He gives us those immediate victories every once in a while just to keep fuel in our tanks. But um, incredible. There was at one point... I'm just trying to think what to tell you because I know I need to be briefer. Um, is that uh, there? Were, okay, so the House of Prayer leader and I, um, we, I was just like, we need to go down and pray for them. We've got to go pray for these walkers that are walking from Houston, 250 plus miles, to Dallas, Texas, where Roe versus Wade was started, which was the whole thing with the abortion industry. So we go down and pray for these ladies. We didn't realize that they were going to be literally the very next day stepping into Dallas County. That was the, that was the day they were literally going to enter the county into Dallas. And so we were pleading the blood of Jesus, you know, just covering them and protecting them and literally feeling like they're just like we're stepping into this war zone. <laughs> Little did I know. So the next day they step into Dallas County. It starts to rain. It starts to just drizzle. So they go, okay, well, let's cut the walk short. You know, let's do 12 miles instead of 14 miles. And uh, they got onto their bus. There's 39 women. They get back onto their bus. The security guy goes, there is a tornado chasing you down the highway. You've got to take shelter. So the bus driver goes to pull off at the nearest truck stop and literally swerves back onto the highway. It says, I never liked Flying J anyhow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the next exit and go to Love's. So here are these 39 women take refuge in Love's truck stop. And the tornado hit Flying J through semi-trucks over 100 feet up in the air. You can watch it on the internet. And uh, the, the women, the 39 women, were literally taking shelter between, t between two tornadoes on either side. We're about 20 minutes north uh, in Dallas, and there's like tornado warnings everywhere. About 12 to 15 tornadoes touch down. We're outside the prayer room going, Jesus! And so I'm, I'm kind of concerned. Rod's about a mile away, so I'm trying to text him. Cell phones don't work in, in tornado zone. When the supercells are going overhead, it's the weirdest feeling. No internet, no cell phones, nothing's working. I'm trying to text him, see if he's okay, because we were getting reports of like, like baseball size hail, and um, Alicia's like, Mom, would you get back to work and pray? Jesus! <laughs> so, anyhow, our kids have been in all kinds of situations. They know that prayer works. The day of the call, we did repentance, took a, had a communion service at uh, the courthouse there, and I mean, it just felt like something shifted in the heavenlies. Fatine was there with us. Oh my goodness, that girl just just breeze fire. <laughs> then um, after that, we were on the East Coast. We then were just down in Pasadena, and the Lord has been speaking to us about the harvest and about the glory of the Lord, about the, the, um, the sent ones, the laborers being thrust, literally cast out into the harvest. So do you want to tell it? Do it okay, so we are, we are moving to, to Pasadena and just believing for God to move and for all of the promises that he's been speaking to us. There's, it's, it's the feeling of a Jesus movement that we're on the brink of and even the angels assembling. There's, there's something in the heavenlies getting ready to happen here on the West Coast. That's right. Good job. Yeah, it's harvest time. I really, that's, that's what the Lord is saying. It's harvest time in our nations, U.S., Canada. And really, it's, it's not just our nations, but we're moving to Pasadena um, 
first part of next year, we'll be having a school. It's, it's three ministries. It's the call, the prayer movement, YWAM, the missions movement, also um, U.S. Center for World Missions. They've, been, they've existed for decades. They're the ones that put out the, uh, the booklet, Operation World, prayer guide for, for nations that are, you know, every nation of the earth, all the unreached peoples. They have a, a wealth of, of information and strategy and, and experience. I was talking to one of the leaders. He said, we have all this, but we don't have the youth. So, so the call and YOM, we're all joining forces with them. And I, it's unto a missions movement. I believe that we're going to experience another missions movement in our nations. I was on the, about, what was it, 19, was it 99 or 2000? I was... I spent a week praying, and the Lord just said, take this week, instead of working, pray. Spend time in prayer like you would, as much time as you would in, in your job. During the midst of that week, I was on the beach, and, and I, there was about a 10-minute window where I knew I was just, I was connected with heaven, and I was seeing what, what God was going to bring on the earth. And, and the words that came out, I started declaring the release of 100,000 missionaries, 100,000 missionaries, and not just, you know, short-term, go and, and see it for a couple of weeks and then come back. That's good, but that's just getting your feet wet. But God is going to send 100,000 sent ones, young and old. They're, they're, they're anointed, they're equipped, they're prepared, they're going to lay their lives down by life or by death. They're going to, to bring the kingdom to every nation, every tribe, every tongue over the earth. This is what's, so this is what I was seeing and I started declaring. I get back to, I was in Bible school at that time. I get back to the school after the, this was a, a week break. The first day in chapel service, the president of the school gets, gets up on the stage and he says, I was in California at this whatever conference and, and the, the, one of the prophets guys started prophesying. He said, 100,000 missionaries. Yeah, confirmation. And the missions director to the school had a team down in Mexico with uh, David Hogan. So they're in David Hogan's uh, whatever chapel prayer room, and they're, they're praying for release of, of laborers into the harvest. And he says, Lord, send a thousand. And the Lord says, no more. Lord, 10,000. He says, no more. Lord, 100,000 missionaries. And the glory of the Lord comes down in the place. So I, it, this, I'm telling you, this is the word of the Lord. I've been praying and carrying this for ever since then. And I believe we're just starting to see. We're on the brink of God exploding something in our nations. So Lord, do it. Lord, we ask that you would bring this to pass. And Lord, not just, not just third world countries. I ask God for, for this nation, for the harvest for Canada, for the harvest for the U.S., Lord. Lord, we may be wealthy beyond what most of the world is, but we are desperately in need of your presence. We are desperately in need of awakening and revival in this nation. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, bring your word to pass. We ask, Lord, even out of this very room that you would mark people today, Lord, that you would mark us today with your presence, with your divine destiny, God. We ask that today, Lord, that you would speak, that you would begin to give visions and dreams to people about who they are and where you're taking them, what you've called them to be and do with their life, Lord. Lord, give us vision beyond what we see right now. Give us vision beyond living for, for pleasures and for wealth and for, and for comforts. Lord, give us your perspective on life. Give us your perspective, your kingdom view, Lord, of these few short years that we have on this earth. God, give us wisdom. Give us ears to hear. I pray for these young men over here that they would hear the word of the Lord today. God, that they would begin to see who they are and what their lives are called to be about I pray for the younger generation, God, that they would rise up and take their place. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear the word.
Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, this is Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. That's worth reading twice. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. When Christ, who is your life, is Christ, is He your life? Is He your life? Colossians 3, for you have died. We, there's this place of, of hiddenness with Christ. Do you, last, I think the last year I was here, we, we preached, I preached on covenant. You all remember that, right? I'll preach on covenant again then. <laughs> no. It's like you said with the picture, remember who you are. When you understand who you are in a covenant relationship with God, the resources of heaven are available to you. That's, that's, this is where, that's the foundation of who you are. But listen, we are hidden with Christ. He's called us to live in this place of hiddenness. We were, early on, one of our adventures, we, uh, the Lord took us from Pensacola to the West Coast and this, this was our first time of, of going out with the team. And we're praying and we, we're asking God, Lord, we want to we wanna do ministry your way. We don't want to just have a machine or a business, but Lord, we want your anointing on it. We want your direction. And so we're, uh, we're praying like this. And, and I had a bunch of things set up all over, you know, ministry and different things. And, and one by one, every one of them canceled. And we're praying, Lord, direct our steps. And they keep canceling. It's like... You know, and, and so finally I'm just like, okay, Lord, just, you know, let's just forget the whole thing. I'll go back and get a job, you know, this. And he said, no, go, your journey will be successful. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm dying inside because I have no finances. I have no ministry agenda at all. We're going to, there's a conference going on in, in Salmon, Idaho, which is a little bitty town in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we didn't even know why we were going to that except for the Lord said, go to that. So we have enough money to get to the West Coast. We have a one-way ticket to the West Coast with our family and our ministry team and nothing to do when we get there. So this is our, our great adventure we're on. And it, but it, we've been praying, dying to our own agenda, dying to doing ministry our way and wanting to do it His way. So we're driving through uh, almost to Wichita Kansas and our car breaks down. The transmission has a leak, you know, stuff's it's coming out the bottom and it, it's a $500 repair and I have no money. It's like, Lord, now what do we do? And we've given up credit cards and we're, we're out there on the edge dangling by this string, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we're sitting in the McDonald's and a, a gal comes up, she says, uh, Mary didn't met her in the line. She was getting ice water because it was 105 degrees out and and we're sitting there really just kind of discouraged. And it's like, now what, Lord? This gal comes up. She said, I know you're probably going to stay at a hotel because they'd been talking about our cars broken. And she said, but would you like to come stay at my house tonight? She invites 10 people to come home with her. And uh, long story short, we ended up spending the day with them, ministering to them. And I, I learned, Lord, don't break my car. I'll stop. Just tell me where I'll, you know, we'll, we'll go and talk to these people. But we've been praying, we want to do it your way. You know, death to our agenda. This is talking about this place of, of being hidden with Christ, dying to our own, our own ways. So we get to this conference, and what are they speaking on? It's, it's Heidi Baker, um, who else? Art Katz, David Ravenhill, and, and David Hogan. So, and it's in a barn. It's like dirt floors. It's, it's like, it, it was a great deal, but they're all preaching about dying to your way of doing ministry. Death to our agenda. And I was like, oh, okay, that's us. Yeah. So we go, we answer the altar call. David Ravenhill gives an altar call to come up and just, just to put, you know, to lay down your life, to die to doing life and ministry your own way. 
And so I drug her up there. She's going, no, you know. So the next day, the conference is over, and we're leaving. And I'm figuring God somehow is going to connect us. You know, he's going to give us something, and, and he didn't. <laughs> you know? So now we're leaving the middle of nowhere, going to Victoria. We're coming this way to Victoria because she has family there. My wife does. And I'm, I'm you know, I just answered this altar call to, to lay down my agenda, to lay down doing life my way. And I'm driving across, uh, what's that country? I mean, Montana, city, state. In the, middle, in the middle of Montana, and I'm complaining. I'm dying very loudly. And the kids are going... <laughs> The kids are going, what's wrong with dad? <laughs> and she finally, she just says, let me out. Just stop. Let me out. You know, we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so it's one thing to say, yeah, I, you know, I'm hidden with Christ. I've died. I've, you know, I don't live. It's Christ lives in me. It's one thing to say that, but then to live that, to really walk it out, it's painful at times because he's not, it's not just an intellectual idea. He's wanting us to live this way. To take our agenda, our reputation, our dreams, all the stuff that we you know, think we have to have and, and be, and just and say, Lord, it's yours. Because see, what was really killing me on this whole thing is I'm going to my relatives. We haven't seen them for five years. They think I'm crazy already because I went to Bible school and I left my business. You know, I, I just left all that, the security and I'm going to get there with no money, and they're going to have to pay me to leave. I mean, it's like, it's killing me. You know? So this is on my death experience in the wilderness. And the next day was August 8th. It was my birthday. We're camping in Montana, and I'm just, I'm just still mad at God. I'm, I'm kind of complaining at him. And finally, but finally I said, okay, Lord, if you want to take me to my in-laws and humiliate me, okay. Go ahead, just kill me, you know. <laughs> We've all prayed that. <laughs> yeah. But that was, <laughs> we get there, we, we took, caught the first ferry, I went across, to, uh, my mother-in-law was going to a prayer meeting, she said, it's only one of the summer, do you want to come? And so I, I went with her, typical pastor's prayer meeting, you know, coffee and donuts, and they talked and prayed a couple minutes. And, and uh, one of the guys came up to me afterwards and he said, hey, what are you doing Sunday? And, and so he, we went to his church and we ministered there. Not only did it open up provision, which I was really hoping something would happen, but it, it, was, it was healing to our families because all her family came. And they had all pretty much disowned us because of our crazy you know, walk with the Lord. But they afterwards, her father came up and just totally affirmed us. I mean, it was, just, it was just a big open door with, with our family. So the rest of that trip, we watched God open up door after door after door. We ministered in eight or nine different churches, home groups, I mean, big and small. And just and without knowing where we were going for the next time, we would just leave and God would, you know, one, I'll tell you one more part of it. Um, I called a guy down in Oregon that I, it was a casual acquaintance. He said, hey, when you get to Oregon, we'll have lunch. Give me, give me, give me a call. So I called him. I said, we'll be there in a couple days. We're going to go do a little camping in the Northwest. And he said, no, don't go camping. Come to my house. You can camp later. So come to my house. So we get there, and the guy takes us in. He opens up. He go, takes us into the kitchen. He said, see all this food? It's all yours. He opens the fridge, all the cupboards. And he said, see this room? This is my prayer room. I want you to base here. I want you just to be here as long as God has you here. And just open the door to us. Everywhere we went, we watched the Lord do this. We finished that whole trip with, with all the bills paid. Uh, I, 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 to get to the West Coast, I borrowed money from the interns who were with us, so I got to pay them back. <laughs> but I, this, is, this is my point. I know we don't have much time, but hidden with Christ. Are you willing to lay down your agenda? Are you willing... In this covenant relationship with God to really lay down your life, to say it's yours. I'll do my life your way. Not, not to have to have your own logic running and dictating what you do and where you go and when you do it. But 
listening to the voice of God and obeying Him. If you will walk this way, you will, you will touch and change your world. You are called to be, to be carriers of the presence of the kingdom of God, to bring His presence, His kingdom into your families, into your workplaces, into your schools. Every sphere of life where you touch, you are to bring the presence of God. Are you willing to walk in a place hidden this with Christ, abandoned to His, His will? I mean, we say all this stuff really easy. Lord, not my will, but yours. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We all say and we agree to that. Okay, now step into it. If you want His kingdom in your life, are you willing to be the one who says, you know, who answers the call? You remember last year, right? Hineni, you don't remember. Genesis 22, you can look at, you can search it out. There's several, several places in the Old Testament. God would call to a man, Abraham, for example. Abraham, and, and Abraham's answer, here am I. Hineni. It's basically saying, yes, Lord, I'm at your service. In Isaiah, what is this, Isaiah 59, let's look there and I'm, I'm done. Isaiah 58, rather. Verse 9. So the Lord called to uh, Samuel, said, who will go? What was Samuel's answer? Hin Hanani. Here am I. Isaiah. Not just Samuel, Isaiah, Moses, Abraham. Look it up. They all said the same thing. The Lord would call to them and they would say, Here am I. So, Isaiah 58, verse 9. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, Here I am. This is what covenant is about. This is what hiddenness with Christ is. When you are willing to say, here am I, Lord, send me, whether it's to the neighbor across the street or whether it's to Africa or to Mexico or to any other place in the earth, when you are willing to say, Hineni, here am I, Lord, I'm, I'm at your service, then when you go, when you step out there and you're about to open your mouth to speak to your neighbor, your relative, your friend, your coworker. When you're going across the, the oceans of the earth to, to another nation and you call to the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help, I need your anointing, I need your wisdom, I need your provision, I need your healing. His answer is, Hineni, here am I. That's why you can go to Mexico and reap a harvest and see healing signs and wonders. God is good for his word. He's called us to live a life of hiddenness with Christ, to lay down our agendas, to lay down our hopes, dreams, because the deal is, back to Colossians 3 for one minute. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed. He's revealed how? Through you. He's revealed through you, through the church. When He is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. There's a glory of God that he is, He's wanting to pour out through your life. As He is revealed in your life laid down, there is a glory that you get to step into and walk with Him in this place of abiding communion. The glory of God poured out in your life and through your life. That's what you're called to. That's what you were made for, each and every one of you. To manifest the kingdom and the glory of God on the earth. That's who you are. In whatever expression that comes out of you, but that's who you are. Remember who you are. Chantel. Ruthie, come here. 
when um, Rod was talking about the trip that we took. See, God called us to the impossible. He's asked you to do the impossible. If it was possible, where would his glory be made manifest? It would just be the glory of man, but it's the glory of God that he's wanting to manifest. When he calls us, he says, you know, come, come. And we, it would go, come what? And he says, sign right here. It, but, but it's blank, God. I don't see the rest of the contract. He goes, that's right, sign right here. Hanani. But you know what? Then he is there and he says, Hanani, if we want the glory of the Lord to be made manifest, are we willing to be the nameless and the faceless? Are we willing to be those who are truly hidden in Christ? Um, in Isaiah, it talks about treasures hidden in darkness. There are treasures, treasures that are hidden in dark places. Contend for those. Contend for those treasures. There are riches, heavenly riches that are yet to be discovered in your lives. He's called you to the impossible. And as you hide yourselves in Christ, he will be made manifest in your life. He will be glorified in who you are. I want you to just close your eyes right now and say, God, what are those places, what are those areas that you have called me to? Lord, to say, yes, yes, here am I, that you are faithful, that you will say, here am I, Hanani, that all of king, uh, the kingdom of God is available, that all of the riches of heaven are at our disposal that you will be manifested and glorified in our midst, that you, our Heavenly Father, will be glorified as Jesus is made manifest in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Don't you just feel His presence in this place? Isn't His glory amazing? We just thank you, Holy Spirit. About a week ago, I want to share a quick dream. Um, I had a dream. I was waking up Levi. Levi, wave. Levi, there he is. Um, waking up Levi, a royal priest of the holy generation. Um, waking up Levi, and on the way to wake him up, I began to declare, I am ruined for the normal. I have been ruined for anything normal. And um, I've been traveling with the halls for about three weeks and hearing them, this message over and over, getting deep down in my spirit. Can I just tell you, I am ruined for anything normal? And can I just invite you into that this morning? Can I say it is worth it all? It is worth it to leave everything behind. Whatever he is asking you to give up, wh whatever he is asking you to do in your family, in your business, I believe God is just, I, I, just a fishing line today and just reeling you in. What is it, God? So right now, we just posture our, ourselves, Holy Spirit. Will you just do that with me, whatever that looks like for you? We just posture ourselves, Holy Spirit, and we say, Hanani, what, are, what is it that you're asking, God? Because here we are. We want all of you, so here is all of us. Just pour it out even now, God. We just invite the ways of your Spirit, God, just to come even now, Lord. We welcome you, Jesus. We want to be ruined, God, for the normal. We want your glory. Even like Pastor said, whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, it doesn't really matter. We just want it. Isn't that right? We just want it. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and just stand right now. Chantel's going to begin singing. And I want you to just do business in your heart right now. God, what are you saying? God, you've called me to the impossible. It's not possible with me, but it's possible with you. And as I just, I'm willing, God, even as the Hall family, God, we say that we're willing to move to California. We would have loved to have come to Abbotsford, but you send us to California. But God, we say yes. We say yes, because we keep our eyes fixed on you. And if it's for your glory to be made manifest here on earth as it is in heaven, God, we ask that each life here, whatever it is, whether it's ministry, whether it's career, whether it's just responding today to open our hearts to, to the working of your Holy Spirit in our lives, then we say, yes, Lord. If it's just placing our agendas on the altar, then we say, yes, Lord. We lay down our agendas. We lay down our agendas for the purposes of the kingdom of God. Your will be done. Your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. 
There's those of you that God is working in your hearts, that he's putting his finger on things. There's, I want you to come forward and we'll pray with you and you do business with the Lord. And there's others that are just saying, I want you, God. I want your glory. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for more. I want to see you move. I want to see miracles in Canada, not just in Mexico. I want to see a move of the Spirit. 600 salvations in Abbotsford, not just in Mexico. We say yes and amen. Yes and amen. Let the south winds blow. Let it blow from Mexico across the U.S. and into Canada. God, we say yes and amen to a Jesus movement where people just walk by a cross and say, what must I do to be saved? God, we say yes. Yes, we are hungry for you. I just invite you to come forward. These are missionaries that reach not just these two nations. I believe it. It'll go much, much farther. Already, already has in New Mexico and different areas, but I tell you what, 1951, my parents, after the Second World War, were at a meeting in Vancouver, a church meeting, and Cameron and Elaine Townsend, the founders of Wycliffe, were there and they shared a vision. And my mom and dad that day committed to serve however it looked, whatever it meant. My dad, at, after the war, was a captain in a commercial airline, and mom was a nurse at VGH. They had a beautiful double lot on Burnaby Mountain, which I wish I had the inheritance of it, but they sold it to go to the mission field in 1952. They were called and they went and they served over 50 years. What am I saying? Oh boy. God is calling for all of us, for our life. His son Jesus gave us his life so we could be life more abundant on this earth. Our heart in this ministry has always been to raise up, equip, and send out. We want to be a storehouse with the ability to give to missions, to give to the nations, to raise up, empower, and to equip people to live the life of service that they've been called into. I know that some of the people standing up here are called full-time service. I know that there's also people that are called to stay home and produce, to give to full-time service. It's, it's part of an army, and not any one part can survive without the other. It is called the destiny of his kingdom to be established on this earth. I just feel, Rod and Marion, if you could come up. Beliskis, if you could come up. Are they still? Yeah, they're here. If you could come up front, these are mission-minded individuals that actually supported my parents for I don't know how many years, probably before I was born. The reason I'm saying this is I'm generations of ministry. I'm not sure what the history is in this place, but this is a missions mindset that God is calling us back into and has declared and confirmed a hundred thousand being sent out. Well, you know what? We're going to do every part that we can to be part of the hundred thousand. <laughs> I think something supernaturally special is happening here today. Ears to hear, hearts to receive and understand and move forward. So I pray here, every individual that's standing up front, any individuals that 
that possibly in their heart know there's a tug, there's a tug, there's a tug, but I'm just not sure what it's going to look like. That's okay, neither are we. But I know one thing, when God's in it, it's glorious. And I will guarantee you one of the greatest mandates in Scripture is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. All the world is right out those doors. All the world is every nation of this planet, every country of this planet. All the world is lifeline on the street, ministering to homeless and people in need. All the world, it's not one ministry, it's all of us coming together in such an aspect of his glorious unity uh, that oil pours from the heavens down, down the beards of Aaron, the beards of his church, the wisdom of his church. His oil pours down the wisdom of the church. Who's the man of wisdom? It's Jesus Christ himself is the man of wisdom and oil is pouring down him onto his bride here today. Let's just all close our eyes and bow our heads and let's open our hearts and our ears to hear. Lord God, every one of us, me included, I, I'm, I'm speaking this for myself as well. I pray, Father, I pray, Lord God, that we have ears to hear what you are laying into our hearts here today. And I pray, Lord God, <laughs> that there is a foundation so strong in this house that it will raise up and send out and raise up and send out and raise up and send out that as, as missionaries like Rod and Marion and their kids and, and, and friends are in this place, Father, that we will bless abundantly, Lord God, the riches of your kingdom and we will bless. And Father, you have called every one of us in this place to be a part. I just ask, Lord God, that you will reveal the part and we will have ears to hear and feet to step into the obedience of the call, of the call, of the call. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are establishing again into our hearts. Reminding us, reminding us, I believe reminding many of us of words that have already been spoken over our lives. I just feel like you can reach out and grab a word of prophecy, a prophetic, of someone praying over you years ago. And I believe it's reopening and reigniting words that have been spoken over your life here this morning. So I pray, Father, you are in heaven and your name's Hallowed, and your son, Jesus Christ, did not die just for us and rise again just for us. He rose again for this world, and I thank you for that Muslim terrorist that's now proclaiming Jesus. I thank you for the signs and the wonders, the miracles, the salvations that we're seeing, Lord God. I thank you for it. But Lord, use us as instruments, as instruments, every one of us in this place, as instruments, everyone that's watching on Ustream or on Windward TV right now, as instruments of your living glory in this place, in this place. 